It is no secret that LinkedIn is a force. Whether you're a candidate, an employer, or a recruiter like myself, LinkedIn is here for now. Like it or love it, this is a valuable tool in the business world, and it's imperative that you know how to utilize this platform and take full advantage of the opportunity that it provides. So, in this video, I'm gonna cover some things that you should be looking at when creating your profile and also how to use the platform to your advantage. So, sit back and let's get into it. I'm Jeremy Nichols and I help candidates and employers as we navigate collectively through this hiring market. And I'm here to help. Please like this video, hit the subscribe button, and ring that notification bell for weekly updates on this channel. Every week, I'll be updating new videos with content on the hiring market for candidates, for employers, recruiters, and anyone who is looking how to navigate this current job market. Now, if you have any questions or comments, you can just put them in the comment section and I will be sure to get back to you. You can also send me an email if you want to make it private and that's jeremy at geckohospitality.com. So last week, I made a video on tips and tricks on your resume. And in that video, I mentioned that LinkedIn is just as valuable as your resume. Recruiters, headhunters, companies are looking at your LinkedIn profile just as much as they're, they're looking at your resume. Now, if you want to see that video on the resume tips, I'll put a card for it right up in the corner. Now, LinkedIn is just as valuable to employers, hiring managers, recruiters, entrepreneurs, as it is as a candidate. So as I go through some LinkedIn tips, there's gonna be some certain areas where I'm touching on the Canada end, and then when I'm touching on the marketing end. I'm gonna make this video into two. So in this video, I'm gonna cover my top 10 out of 20. So in this video, I'll have 10, and then I'll make another video with my other 10. So without further ado, let's dig into it. Whether you're a candidate, an employer, a recruiter, or an entrepreneur that is trying to promote their business, you have to look at LinkedIn as more than just a social media app. Oh, it's a social media app with business leaders. You don't wanna treat it like Facebook. I think you should be using LinkedIn as a billboard, but a way more effective billboard. This is not just a billboard that is up on the highway and hopefully getting your attention when you drive by to go get your groceries. And maybe you looked at it and maybe you jotted down some notes. This is a billboard that has the opportunity to get in front of millions. So this billboard is vital for you to, to use when you are looking for a job or promoting your business or looking for talent. Now I know it is nerve wracking to put yourself out there. Most of us are introverts and to put yourself out there on a business networking platform is scary. Trust me, I can relate. It took me a long time to get very active on LinkedIn. I think I created my profile eight years ago, maybe even more. And it wasn't until recently where I really just pushed myself to another level on LinkedIn and I saw results. So you have to try to get over being nervous and just start to practice and getting yourself out there. It's such a valuable tool that so many are not utilizing. And when I'm talking to candidates, it's one of the first things I'm gonna look at on their profile and one of the first tips I'm gonna give them if they want to cut through the noise and get noticed. It's an opportunity. And if you're not taking advantage of the opportunity to brand yourself personally on LinkedIn, you're wasting an opportunity. And this is an opportunity that somebody else is gonna take advantage of somebody else that is your competitor or another candidate who's looking to get the attention of the hiring manager. And if you're wasting that opportunity, someone else will take advantage of it. And that's the last thing you want. The last thing you want is to be sitting back and watching someone else doing what you know you should have done and then having a ton of regret. Your LinkedIn profile is the foundation of your personal branding. And right now, Let's jump into my top 10 tips. My first tip is pick a great profile pic. 
Now this one might seem easy, but you would be surprised at how many are failing this. I suggest getting a photographer. If you don't know a photographer personally, look one up through your network and try to get someone who can give you a nice headshot. My typical advice would be a breastplate up, um, of course, smiling, show personality, smiling cells, all right? We don't wanna have Mr. Serious Face, you know, staring at the camera. That's not a good look. You want a nice, smiling headshot. Mine is uh, not taking the advice. I actually did have a headshot from Breastplate Out for a long time and I switched it up with a uh, mid-thigh to headshot, which again is, is fine. I had a photographer take mine. So if you wanna do one where you're um, standing up and it's mid-thigh to head, that, that's fine too. But if you do something like that, have a photographer work with you with lighting and getting you, you situated right for that shot. But uh, typically, uh, nice, high quality, high definition headshot. Tip two, the background photo, or what I call the banner. So that's the picture that sits behind your profile pic if you're on a desktop or when you're on your phone or your iPad, it's the picture that's behind the profile pic. I don't know the stats, but I do see a huge chunk of people not taking advantage of this. This is an opportunity to really make your profile differentiate itself from others and to give yourself a little bit more personality. So if you don't have Canva, that's a great tool that you can use and create a banner for yourself. Canva has templates and you can get in there and make something really nice and it's set in the specs for LinkedIn. And that's Canva, if you don't know, is C-A-N-V-A, canva.com. Um, if you don't know about Canva, or you're, you're, you're not looking to use it, you, I'm sure you can find some HD high quality wallpaper pics on a Google search if you want. Uh, but my point is, take a few minutes uh, and a little bit of time to make that banner pic behind you. My tip three, your headline is important. Now this is going to be your headline, which is under your name on LinkedIn. Now this you're gonna hear people telling you a lot of different things about this topic right here. So I gotta come at this from a few different angles. If you're a candidate and you're looking to be discovered by headhunters and recruiters and employers, I think it's paramount that you put your title there. Now, if your title is something that is company specific, right? Something that the company kinda of made up within your ranks that is not a common title, you may wanna see what other titles out there are pretty much the same thing, right? Like I've seen it before, I'll give an example in hospitality. I've seen a title called Director of Fun. Now, there's not a lot of directors of fun out there. There are directors of events, right? And that's what this person was doing, was a director of events. So someone like that that has a unique title that is company specific, try to find what that title is um, in most industries, like where you would apply to. Because when recruiters like myself or headhunters or employers are looking for you, we're gonna be looking for that title. And if you have a title that is not easily discoverable, you are gonna fall way back in the search. You might not even appear at all. So as a candidate, your title, your headline is very important. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you're gonna to wanna to do something totally different. You're not gonna to wanna to put Brian Smith, entrepreneur. You're gonna to wanna to have something that tells us real quick what you do. So when we're scrolling through and we're looking at um, who to connect with and network with, we know what you do. You don't really have to take the time to sell us too much because we know the gist of what you do. So try to capitalize on that headline and get the point across on what you do. Tip four is the summary section. The summary section should be your about me section. The first thing to learn about the LinkedIn summary section is have one. Take that time to have a summary section. Now, for candidates, I would keep it maybe 80, 20, 80% 80 business, 20% yourself and fun, 
maybe even 90 10 90 percent business and 10 percent fun but you know you don't want to copy and paste the job description or copy and paste your resume in the summary section you want to tell us you know like you're like you're talking to us a little bit about yourself and then some you know little lighthearted fun fun facts in there just just to make it a little bit more lighthearted because it is social media so make it make it more social don't be afraid to invest some time into this so if you're you, you can put one up right away but i definitely would come back and revisit it maybe do a few templates or try a few out run your summary by a few friends and see what they think this is the most personal and somewhat fun section of your LinkedIn profile. So it's pretty important that you take the time to put into your summary. Tip five, use power words. Now I went over power words in a lot of detail in my resume writing video, and I'll put a card for that um, up above in this video. And power words are words that you're gonna use to help emphasize what you did in particular at your company or what you're doing in your business. Words like created, implemented, increased sales by. Words that, that emphasize what you did. Now these words are, are buzzwords and they're words that are gonna make you stick out. They're gonna show uh, future employers or future clients things that you did. My tip six, grow your network. This one right here, you, you, you need to go all in. I would make this a daily exercise to connect with as many people as possible within your niche. Now, I'm gonna speak for myself. I'm in hospitality and I recruit and headhunt in the state of Florida for hospitality. So I, I'm pretty selective on who I connect with. They have to be people who are within my niche. Now, just because I'm in Florida, I do connect with um, people across the country because in my industry, people relocate and they move a lot. But I, I make sure that I'm pretty much just connecting within my industry or industries that um, have relationships with my industry. So I don't really connect with every single person that sends me a request because I know that I'm capped off at 30,000. Now getting to 30,000, you might think, oh, there's a cap, but it's gonna take a long time for you to get to that. So I would just play around, search for companies that you wanna work with first. So connect with those companies um, and then look and see who works there, the decision makers, people who are in the job titles or in the division that you wanna work in, connect with them, start there. Then start connecting with people that do the, the same type of work you do. So if you're a director of sales, connect with directors of sales and you might be wondering why would I want to reach out to possible competitors you might be thinking that depending on what um, field you're in well when you connect with them you then turn third connections into seconds if they're connected which gives you the opportunity to send connection requests out to more people the more people that you're connected with the bigger your network so in case you don't know this, there's firsts, seconds, and thirds on LinkedIn. Your firsts, you can send a direct message to. You can even see their contact info, sometimes phone number, sometimes email. Your seconds are people who are connected to your firsts, so it broadens your network more, and you can send those seconds connection requests, and when they become your firsts, you can then reach out to them. Thirds, you, you can't send connection requests to because they're not within your network. So the larger you grow your network, the more people you connect with, the more opportunity that you're gonna have to turn those thirds into seconds and reach out. So again, my number six tip, grow your network. Tip number seven, your relevant skills. Now, this one takes a little time to nurture as well because it depends on how many people you're connected with and how many people are going to eventually endorse you on LinkedIn, but it's important to start this out, okay? So look through the relevant skills that you have as a candidate, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a business professional. What are your relevant skills that you've had in prior jobs? And list them in the skills section. Then try to start getting endorsements. So from people who are connected with you, see if they'll endorse you. Believe it or not, 
people do look at that. Now, I'm not going to say it's a end all be all. I'm not out there looking at candidates saying, oh, you know, Stacy's only got 13, you know, endorsements for sales. It depends. I mean, if you have a small network and I can tell you're not really working LinkedIn as much, I'm not going to you know, look too much into that. But if I do see 99 plus on your sales uh, endorsements, that does tell me that you know, you're obviously being endorsed by quite a few people on your network. So it's something that you should still take advantage of. And that is um, towards the bottom of the profile. So that is the, the skill section. So make sure that you are again, um, putting in your relevant skills. And then um, as you have them, you feel comfortable with them, um, start sending out uh, requests to people that you know for endorsements. My tip number eight, share the love. The endorsements I just spoke about. Now, if you want some, the quickest way to get them is to go on other people's pages and endorse them. They will get notifications. And a lot of times when people say, wow, you just endorsed me for three skills, they'll take the time and go on your page and endorse you too. So take the time, go through your network, and then share the love, share the endorsements, endorse your friends and colleagues and network, and they will return the favor. Tip number nine, the services that you offer. This tip is more geared towards the entrepreneur or the consultant out there, the business minded, the people who are out there trying to, to gain clients. There is a new feature on LinkedIn which helps you showcase the services that you provide. So freelancers, entrepreneurs, consultants, they can use this section to demonstrate and show the services that they are offering. So this is another tool that LinkedIn provided that I think if you are in the game to do some business development or you're trying to build your client pool, use that section. Tip number 10 is to look at your competitors. So a competitor being, if you're a candidate, look at people who are very active on LinkedIn that have your job description, that are getting attention, that you see popping up in your feed and start to watch their posts. Now you can go view their posts by going to their profile. You can click on their activity. Now it's gonna have activity and then it's gonna have a section um, two over called posts. Right, so the activity is just the stuff that they're liking and the comments that they're adding. But you, you wanna see their organic content. You wanna see the stuff that they're sharing and they're writing, if, if, if there's someone who's getting a lot of attention on LinkedIn. So go to their posts and just watch you know, what they're doing. Are they doing a lot of pictures? Are they doing a lot of organic written posts? Are they doing a lot of shares? See how many views they're getting or how many likes they're getting and how much traction those posts are getting and get an idea on what's gonna get yourself noticed. So I can only speak for my niche. And this video, I know there's people watching this right now that are in other industries. So I don't, I don't really wanna get into what's working for me because again, I'm hospitality specific, but I would look at your competitors. If you're a candidate, go look at people who are in the same title as you and see what's getting them attention and start making some notes and start figuring out what you're gonna do to drive your own content. Now, I hope that these tips helped you when you're creating your LinkedIn profile. And if you have a LinkedIn profile already, which I'm pretty sure you do, maybe this video helped you just check the boxes and make you feel good and confident that you're doing all the right things. So if you are, kudos to you. And if you're not on LinkedIn yet, you need to do that, especially as a candidate. You know what? Scratch that, <laughs> especially as an entrepreneur, employer, candidate, period. If you're in the business world, you need to be on LinkedIn right now. So if you have any questions at all, again, you can write them in the comment section below. If you want to send me a message personally and ask me a question, it's jeremy at geckohospitality.com. Again, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I will be updating it every single week with content for the job market. And I will also be putting my second video for this LinkedIn content on next week. So thank you very much for joining me and I hope you have a great week.